In this video, I'll cover four reasons why Medicare and Social Security are confused for one another. First off, Medicare and Social Security benefits are not the same. They are very different benefits, but for the reasons that I'll go over, they're often perceived as the same thing, and they're both brought up in the same sentence a lot. But again, they are not the same. And even knowing that they are different benefits, many have the perception that once you get one, you have to get the other. And this is not the case either. In fact, in our experience, more often than not, they happen at different times from one another. So let's get into this. The first time most of us became aware of these two things is way back when we got our first paycheck. Our parents weren't paying us enough allowance and they refused to buy us those nice shoes that we really wanted. So to teach them a lesson, we started our first part-time job. We were excited to make money so that we could buy whatever we wanted. Our parents were also excited to spend less on us. And deep down, I'm sure that they hoped that the arguments about us blowing their money on junk would stop, or at least that was teenage Eric's life. Anyway, let's say that we were lucky enough to have a wage of $10 an hour, and over two weeks, we worked 40 hours. Well, we already had every penny spent on those new shoes, maybe a night out on the town with our teenage sweetheart, and the Pop-Tarts that our parents never let us eat. Well, when we opened our paycheck expecting $400, we were met with a sledgehammer of disappointment when the check was not $400. It was quite a bit less than that. Our first introduction to taxes was not the most pleasant experience, and as we were complaining to our parents about just how unfair it all was, our parents just smiled and said, welcome to real life. Once again, while trying to teach them a lesson, we were the recipients of that lesson. When you get a paycheck, you'll notice that your gross pay is higher than your take-home pay. Well, why is that? Part of the reason is FICA taxes. FICA stands for the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, and these taxes are paid by you and your employer. 6.2% of your income is taken from you out of your paycheck and put towards Social Security, and then another 6.2% is paid by your employer. If you're self-employed, then all 12.4% of that is paid by you. 1.45% of your income is taken from you and put towards Medicare. Again, your employer is contributing the other 1.45%. So 15.3% of your pay goes from both you and your employer to FICA taxes to pay for Social Security and Medicare benefits. They are clearly different based on the percentages I just shared, but they are both bundled under the same FICA umbrella. The second way that these two are closely connected is that to start taking Medicare benefits or to start taking Social Security benefits, you will be working through the Social Security Administration. If you are filing for these in person, you will be going to your local Social Security Administration office, or you can call them or you can mail the paperwork to them. If you are filing for these online, you will be using SSA.gov, the Social Security Administration's website. You will create a My Social Security account on this website to sign up for Medicare. And using this online account, you will be able to file for Medicare Parts A and B, as well as start your Social Security benefits. You can do both of these at the same time, but again, we mostly see people signing up for Medicare and Social Security at different times. These are different events. So the fact that you have to go through the Social Security Administration to sign up for Medicare is a common reason why the two are perceived as the same programs when they are most definitely not. The third way that these two get confused revolves around the fact that you could automatically be signed up for Medicare if you take Social Security benefits early. If you start taking Social Security benefits before you turn 65 years old, once you reach 65, you will automatically be signed up for Medicare Parts A and B. You will automatically receive your Medicare card about 90 days before your 65th birthday. If this happens to you, you can opt out of Part B, and for some, there are valid reasons to do this, but you have to proactively do something to opt out. Otherwise, you get both Part A and Part B. Again, this is only if you start taking Social Security benefits before you turn 65. If you are not taking Social Security benefits before age 65, once you reach 65, Medicare is not automatic, and you have to now proactively sign up for Medicare through the Social Security Administration, like we talked about in the second section of this video. It makes total sense why these two are confused, right? They are intimately connected, but they are still different. All right, the last one that we'll cover in this video has to do with your life once you are on both Medicare and Social Security. Medicare has monthly premiums or dollars that you have to pay every single month just to have it. For most people, this is just for Medicare Part B, but for a small percentage of Americans, they also have Part A premiums. Now, the amount that you need to pay for Part B is dependent on your income. Higher income earners pay more, but the base amount here in 2023 is $164.90 per month that you need to pay for Medicare Part B. That is per person, by the way. So if you are married, both you and your spouse each pay that amount monthly. 
Social Security determines whether you will pay a higher premium based on income information that it receives from the IRS. Well, once you are taking Social Security benefits, that Part B premium is deducted from your Social Security check. So if you are expecting to see $2,000 in Social Security income, but you only see $1,835.10, now you know why. You can also elect to have your prescription drug coverage, which is Medicare Part D, taken from your Social Security check, as well as your Medicare Advantage plan premiums if you have a Medicare Advantage plan and if that plan has premiums. All right, here is part of why all of this matters. For the fiscal year 2022, the U.S. spent $755 billion on Medicare, making up 12% of all U.S. spending. Also for 2022, the U.S. spent $1.22 trillion on Social Security, making up 19% of all U.S. spending. So these two programs make up $1.975 trillion and 31% of all dollars spent in the U.S. These are massive programs that impact a lot of people. These programs are remarkably complicated because of the different ways that they are used and the different people that they serve. If you are approaching Medicare or Social Security decisions, you may feel like it's an absolute maze of rules and deadlines and policies and exceptions and decisions that you have to make. You are not alone. You do not have to do this by yourself. We exist to help people with these decisions, and it does not cost you anything to use us for Medicare or Social Security help. The government does not allow us to charge you money to help you with these programs. So if somebody is offering to help you with these for money, then run. This is illegal. They cannot charge you for this. If you are coming up on Medicare or Social Security decisions and you would like help or direction or assistance or someone to help you sign up for these plans or benefits, you can reach out to us on our website here or you can send me an email. I put my email in the description. Now you know how and why Medicare and Social Security are related but different, sort of like siblings in that they share a lot of crossover when it comes to how they are funded, how you sign up for them, and how you deal with Medicare premiums once you're on Medicare. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe for more details around these two programs. A like always helps our channel, and I will see you in the next video.